This is Dr. David Johnson at Quillen College of Medicine, East Tennessee State University, and this is my amino acid metabolism big picture. And it has most of everything you need to know about amino acid metabolism in one simple video. This is the big picture itself. You'll notice that the TCA cycle intermediate is central to it. Uh, a lot of the amino acids feed in and out of there. Uh, the, there are a number of reactions around the side that I'll talk about, such as essential amino acids and transaminations and glutamate dehydrogenase and glutaminase and the urea cycle and a couple of other very interesting products we'll talk about, as well as a number of diseases. You'll see the diseases marked in red with a red X. The essential dietary amino acids means we have to eat these in our diet. And they are valine, isoleucine, and leucine, which are all branch, the, th the three branch chain amino acids. Threonine is also like a branch chain amino acid, but it has a hydroxyl group on its side chain. Methionine is a sulfur amino acid, and methionine can be converted into cysteine under normal conditions when we have plenty of methionine and the other cofactors that we need. And the sulfur is added to cysteine, uh, carbon skeleton, to make cysteine. So uh, the sulfur is what makes it essential. And so this, uh, getting sulfur is not easy, it comes from methionine. Phenylalanine is aromatic, as is tyrosine. Phenylalanine is normally converted into tyrosine. And as long as we have plenty of phenylalanine and, convert it, and can convert it to tyrosine, tyrosine is not essential, but it becomes essential if we can't make that conversion or we don't have enough phenylalanine. Tryptophan is also essential. We can't make tryptophan, we have to eat it. Lysine, histidine, and arginine, we also have to eat those. They are essential, they all have positive charges. Arginine has a little asterisk here it's generally considered uh, essential for children, but not for adults. And so missing any one of these amino acids results in muscle wasting because you've got, they, we need these amino acids to make muscle. And Quashicor is a malnutrition disease in which we don't have an adequate protein intake. Very rare in the U.S., uh, sometimes seen in child abuse, results in stunted growth and permanent mental disabilities. The children quite often have distended stomachs. They look, they look like they may be fat, but they're not. That's edema and uh, that causes that to occur. To remove amino acids from the amino acids that we eat, we, ammonia is toxic, so we've got to handle that ammonia in our bodies. And the first step of doing that is to do a transaminase reaction. These are transaminases or amino transferase enzymes. There are lots and lots of these. This is an example. We see glutamate uh, serum, glutamate pyruvate transaminase. Uh, designated as SGPT, also called ALT or alanine transaminase, uses the coenzyme co pyridoxal phosphate, abbreviated PLP. Pyridoxal phosphate is made from the vitamin pyridoxine or vitamin B6. The uh, first step in this reaction is to take a glutamate, which has an amino group, and transfer that to pyruvate to make alanine. So the amino group gets moved from glutamate to pyruvate to make alanine, and then uh, pyruvate, uh, having picked up that amino group, its carbon skeleton is what's used to make alanine. The carbon skeleton of glutamate gets converted into alpha ketoglutarate, which is a TCA cycle intermediate. As I said, this reaction can go back and forth. It has an equilibrium of one. So if you have lots of alanine, it goes to the left. If you have lots of glutamate, it goes, goes to the right. Glutamate dehydrogenase uh, is used to release ammonia from glutamate so it can be used to make urea. This reaction normally only goes to the right, and the byproduct is alpha ketoglutarate, which goes into the TCA cycle, and it uses NAD as a dehydrogenase reaction. Glutaminase is acted on by uh, glut glutamine, which is the uh, predominant amino acid in the blood. It's, it carries two amino groups. It's acted on by glut glutaminase to release ammonia, which is then used to make urea, and then gl the glutamate can be acted on by glutamate dehydrogenase. This is the urea cycle. The urea cycle starts out with carbon dioxide and ammonia and uses the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1, which is in the mitochondrial matrix, it uses 2 ATP to make carbamyl phosphate. 
If you can't do this reaction, you have hyperammonemia type 1. The next step is to convert carb carbamyl phosphate, combine it with ornithine to make citrulline. That uses the enzyme ornithine transcarbamylase. Ornithine transcarbamylase is the most frequent deficiency in the urea cycle, and it results in the accumulation of carbamyl phosphate, which leaks out into the cytosol, where car uh, where it's converted into orotate. And that orotate uh, will build up in the blood and the urine. And so it's a measure of whether you've got ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency. This is an X-linked disease, so uh, females don't have it, males, uh, but they carry it, and male, male children will have it. Ornithine is made into, combined with carbamyl phosphate to make citrulline. The citrulline combines with aspartate, which is the second amino group that comes in, and that makes arginosuccinate, again requiring two ATP uh, for a total of four ATP for the urea cycle. ATP goes to AMP, there's two high energy phosphate bonds, uh, so it's two ATP equivalents. Now argin arginosuccinate is split apart to yield arginine and fumarate. Fumarate goes into the, into the TCA cycle. Arginine gets cleaved by arginase, which is found only in the liver. That's why it's important to have a healthy liver, but, uh, because if you can't do this, you'll have high ammonia buildup, uh, and that's one of the problems with liver cancer and cirrhosis. So here's urea, one amino group from ammonia, CO2, and another one from aspartate. Now, carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 is different from carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2 out in the cytosol because it has an absolute requirement for N-acetylglutamate as an activator. <clears throat> and if uh, this uh, it, it is not present, if you build up propionyl-CoA, and propionyl-CoA you can see could be built up at one point in the amino acid metabolism or uh, an odd chain odd numbered chain fatty acid degradation, then you inhibit this reaction to make an acetyl glutamate. And that can cause uh, similar problems in the urea cycle. Glucose can be used to make serine. Serine can give up a methyl group to tetrahydrofolate. Tetrahydrofolate is an acceptor and donor of one carbon groups. It is uh, the vitamin folate or folic acid. And so those methyl groups can be used to make glycine and make methylene tetrahydrofolate. Serine can then go to pyruvate. Pyruvate can go to alanine. Threonine, which is an essential amino acid, is also broken down into pyruvate. Asparagine uh, can go to aspartic acid by the, via the enzyme asparaginase, releasing ammonia. And then aspartate can enter the urea cycle, as I told you earlier, to make fumarate. And the fumarate can be converted back into oxaloacetate if you need more aspartic acid in the TCA cycle. And alpha ketoglutarate can go to glutamate and glutamine. And we'll talk about other steps in a moment. But this is where you can make your non-essential amino acids, except for threonine here. The phenylalanine is normally, as I told you, converted into tyrosine, and that requires the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase, which uses the cofactor abbreviated BH4, which stands for tetrahydrobiopterin. If you can't do this reaction, you have a disease called phenylketonuria, which is abbreviated PKU. These children, if they're not uh, treated properly, they don't get proper myelination of the brain, and they wind up with a very low IQ and mental issues. Phenylalanine and PKU builds up to high levels in the blood where it gets converted into phenylacetate and phenylpyruvate, which are diagnostic uh, measurements there. Tyrosine, uh, which phenylalanine is normally converted into, can be, uh, again, using tetrahydrobiopterin, add another hyd hydroxyl group to make dihydroxyphenylalanine, or DOPA, which is a neurotransmitter, uh, very important in Parkinson's disease. If you can't convert DOPA into melanin, which is one of the products you make from DOPA, then you have albinism. 
and that is due to a tyrosinase deficiency. The enzyme that converts uh, DOPA to melanin is tyrosinase, and if you're missing that, we're albinos. DOPA is also converted, adding a methyl group from S adenosylmethionine into epinephrine and norepinephrine. Epinephrine is a hormone and neurotransmitter, and epinephrine is uh, adrenaline is another name for that. It's also uh, involved as a hormone in the fight or flight response. So uh, then tyrosine is eventually converted into homogentisate. The old name for that is alcaptonuria. So if you can't convert homogentisate to fumarate, then you have alcaptonuria. So alcaptone is the old name for homogentisate. These people, their urine, if you stand, sits around, oxidizes, it'll turn dark. They also have dark deposits of the homogentisate in their tissues, such as their joints, their vertebrate, the knees, etc. It causes a mild arthritis. Niacin uh, is tryptophan is normally used as a precursor for to synthesize synthesize niacin if you don't have enough niacin in your diet uh, and niacin is also vitamin b3 and it's used to make nad and a deficiency of that results in pellagra also called hartnup's disease and in pellagra we have the three d's diarrhea dermatitis and dementia and tryptophan can also be made, used to make melatonin and serotonin, which are neurotransmitters, uh, again, using tetrahydrobiopterin. That's a, th uh, a third place we've used tetrahydrobiopterin. And the melatonin is involved in our biological clocks, and serotonin is useful in sleep. The branch chain amino acids, leucine, Valine and isoleucine are all converted to alpha keto acids, alpha keto acids, and if they can't be taken on the next step, you wind up with maple syrup urine disease. And that's due to a deficiency of the alpha keto acid or branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase that causes that. And so these children smell like burnt sugar or maple syrup uh, in their urine. The two uh, strictly ketogenic amino acids are leucine and lysine. Those are the only two strictly ketogenic amino acids. Remember that all, quite often a, uh, a question on step one. So here's the pathway for methionine to homocysteine. You make SAM. This is, requires ATP here. And homocysteine uh, can be converted back into methionine using B12 and getting a methyl group uh, from uh from homocysteine. Sam, once SAM has donated its methyl group, you get homocysteine from it. And that, that homocysteine can be uh, added methyl group back using B12, vitamin B12. This is one of the two steps in the body where we use vitamin B12. Then homocysteine goes to cystathionine. And if you can't do this reaction, you have homocysteinuria. And in homocysteinuria, these people have early onset atherosclerosis, very severe atherosclerosis. So uh, it's very important that they have adequate amounts of B6, B12, and folate or homocysteine builds up. And then serine is added to homocysteine to make cystothionine. Cystothionine then gets, gets converted into alpha-ketobutyrate and cysteine. So the carbon chain of serine is used to pick up the sulfur from methionine or homocysteine to make cysteine. Then, then alpha-ketobutyrate goes on to propionyl-CoA. Branch chain uh, or odd-numbered fatty acids also yield propionyl-CoA, as well as the branch chain amino acids, leucine and isoleucine and valine. Then propionyl-CoA adds a carbon group via biotin CO2. Biotin carries a carboxyl group and adds it to propionyl-CoA to make methylmalonyl-CoA. Methylmalonyl-CoA is then uh, mutated by an enzyme called methylmalonyl-CoA mutase, again requiring B12, the second place where you need B12, to make succinyl-CoA. And if you're missing this reaction, you can't, if you have a uh, don't have this enzyme, you have a methylmalonic acidemia, you should look up the Patricia Stallings murder case. Just Google it. Be very interesting. Help you solidify the knowledge that this can be very deleterious to one's uh, uh, life in various ways. Sam is uh, 
is a one is a very potent one methyl carbon donor. I told you that was used to convert a dopa into norepinephrine and epinephrine earlier. And so that one methyl group comes here from methionine from, um, so you need adequate amounts of methionine to make that one methyl uh, donor. Vitamin B12 is used in only these two reactions in the body. It's also called cobalamin. Remember, uh, intrinsic factors made by the parietal cells of the stomach. And if you don't have adequate intrinsic factor, you wind up with pernicious anemia uh, because you can't bind B12 and take it into the blood because intrinsic factors involved in that. People that take a lot of antacids, for example, that, that prevent parietal cell function quite often wind up with a B12 deficiency. So this is the uh, histamine. Um, histidine is converted into histamine in mast cells. Mast cells make store a lot of histamine. They also have receptors on the cell surface for IgE. So they, in allergic reactions, the IgE will cause these mast cells to degranulate. They release lots of histamine. If you, if you have IgE uh, against peanuts, for example, peanut proteins, you can, and you eat peanuts, you'll, you can go into anaphylactic shock due to the tremendous vasodilation that occurs with a, with a massive amount of histamine release, and you can die. So this is the only cell, that, mast cells, the only cell in our body that can kill us. Proline goes to glutamate. Uh, glut glutamate and glutamine actually feed into alpha-ketoglutarate. We've talked about that before. Arginine also is used in urea, but arginine can also be used to make tetrahydrobiopterin. With tetrahydrobiopterin can be used to make nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is the endothelial relaxing factor. causes mild vasodilation of our vessels. We need to keep that going on all the time, and so our endothelial cells have this uh, nitric oxide synthetase, which uses arginine. This is again the overview of the uh, of the uh, big picture of amino acid metabolism. I hope it helps you. I hope you can learn a lot from it. Uh, enjoy it. Good luck with your studying and learn a lot. <laughs>